This podcast encourages and empowers you to create your own unique real story, develop your own unique real statement, and discover your own unique real self. The power is yours. Good night, good night, Tara Padua. How are you doing on this wonderful, beautiful night? I am amazing. I'm so excited to be chatting with you. Um, yeah, New York City is cold, but this is warm, so I'm excited. Okay, all right. Well, do tell me then which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this specific time in history. I think we, well, which of my talents? I think um, it's because I'm an executive coach. <laughs> we connected on LinkedIn. Tell me about your executive coaching skill then. Mm, I've been doing it since 2003. Um, for nine years, I also trained coaches. I was part of the an executive team for a coach training program. Um, my best friend calls me the my and my best friend. I mean, my mentor and my sponsor and everything calls me the Yoda of coaching. So, um, I think as a as a coach, like my power punch is I'm vulnerable, um, courageous, and um, yeah, just love love what I do. Ooh, so we've gone into the Yoda part, right? Like, do you do the Yoda thing? Like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes people think that I'm like clairvoyant or wise, and I'm very little. I, I don't, I'm not wrinkly or old or bald, but um, definitely very wise hmm. and also very um, just zen, you know, just but when you complement that with like the ferocity, it's sort of a, an interesting package. Yeah, yeah, sounds interesting. Like I'm, I'm like, where, where do I purchase this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, who did you learn that from? That ability to combine uh, what's necessary, if you would, the power pack punches, uh, the tender words. Who did you learn that from? Oh my gosh. So I know when I kind of discovered that I I wasn't doing it um, and sort of started actively developing the skill. Um, but I would say that being Latin, uh, directness is definitely part of my culture. I joke when I'm teaching people how to project in terms of public speaking that my family likes to stand six inches from each other and yell, and I call that the Puerto Rican whisper. <laughs> um, I'm also sort of a big fan of... Um, so let that ferocity and tenderness, I think, really started back in 2000. Five, I want to say I was a newly appointed executive and leader and leading this training program. And I noticed that um, they had actually nicknamed me before I was the Yoda. I was the Gordon Ramsay of life coaching. And part of it was um, I could be incredibly direct. My background was in finance. I could be incredibly direct. But um, if I was being direct, I was melting your eyebrows off and without any vulnerability or without any compassion. And so I kind of dubbed that the problem with being Tara is that sort of how do I integrate two strengths? Because the people who know me know that I'm very tenderhearted and very empathic and very compassionate. But I kind of had divorced that from my work self. And also people are scary. You know, you're talking to people, trying to make a difference with them. And um, so I'm, I just remember actively beginning to try to integrate the courage with the heart um and it led to some pretty funny you know kind of scenarios because it didn't always work out <laughs> sometimes i was too empathic and you know feeling your feelings with you and the other times i was um just too you know fierce and would have to say i'm sorry my bad i didn't realize that i you know all 110 pounds of me did that to you but um <laughs> over over time like you i learned how to integrate those things and I'm so grateful because um, sort of like a cell phone, you need to connect before you send a message. And for me, it sort of allowed me to engage with people um, in a really meaningful way. Sort of like my puppy, when I adopted him, he, when he wanted to play at the park, he would like run up to another dog and sideswipe him. <laughs> and I'm like, if, if you want a dog to play with you, that's exactly not how. So we actually had to learn how to, you know, engage. Mm -hmm. Well, that's intriguing. I love I love the way you're f like 
going between uh, the personalities as you speak as well, which is pretty intriguing uh, thus far mm-hmm. in our conversation. Pretty, pretty intriguing. Uh, why will you continue to be that person, though, who is the litmus test of two personalities, one that can cause harm? Uh, in fact, the both can cause harm, yeah? One of too much, yeah? So why yeah. will you continue to be that person, though, who is finding balance? Well, I feel like as a woman, I'm the oldest of four, a single mother, um, there, and especially a successful woman, there, we kind of operate in a lot of warrior mode. And I think, though, that, like, too much warrior mode and it's, it's burnout, you know, like I used to have, um, I struggled with adrenal fatigue. And uh, I remember another mentor of mine said that I'm sort of like a diamond drill bit. You know, like if you're a diamond drill, but everything looks like something to drill. Mm. And so I think why personally it was necessary for me to do this work is to integrate more of like the goddess or to integrate more of the um, the tenderhearted. Like I feel like in this year alone, like <laughs> I don't know, like most of the miracles that my clients produce or that I've produced in my life have, in, you know, like been one part warrior, one part courage and the other part goddess or surrender or um just that tender-hearted mm-hmm. and for and for me honestly um i love the tender part because it just allows me to connect with humanity like i love when i can see when my tender parts connect with somebody else's it sounds so wrong to say it like you know it's nighttime here but um what i mean by that is like you know, whether it's on my podcast. I think we know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. I just think that it's like, you know, like you got to go first. Like you got to be vulnerable. And I think especially as a woman, you know, like that's as that's one of my gifts and also a privilege that I, I can go there. Um, but you kind of need equal parts. And, and I think as a leader, you need to go there first. Yeah, sounds good. Well, where's the best place for someone that's listening to connect with you? Um, they can find me on LinkedIn, Tara Padua, or they can find me at nextfem.com, or they can find me at tarapadua.com. So lots of different places, Twitter, Instagram, same thing. Tell me one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years, please. Oh my God, that's a good question. That's a hard question. Um, I build things. I build lots of things. Um, build programs, build... Um, physical structures build. I just I build a lot of things. How does that make you feel? Amazing. I'm and I feel like I have the soul of an artist, so I like to craft things, and um, things will tell you what they need to be. So you mm-hmm. just need to pay attention. And so whether it's people or some kind of art project you're doing, or you know, like it's sort of like discovery. Like what is this meant to become? That's intriguing. Why would you suggest someone that's listening? Uh, with similar type personalities do that uh, exist in creativity if you would I think it's um, you know to at least for me it's doing so what would I recommend okay um, I think what I did so what I did this year was I, I, I kind of looked back when I was like okay I'm, if I'm 124 which one of my best friends wants to live to 126 so I'm going to live to 124 and I was like what would I want my life to be like and uh, for me it was really about adventures and people and you know stuff like that and so I feel like wherever there are people and adventures then you're going to get into some cool project and build something um so I guess my advice would be say yes to something and go do it with other people. Hmm. Amazing audience you're hearing it live again from Tara Padua. Tara, let's switch gears for a moment. Let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Mm. Tara, what is your earliest childhood memory? Oh, um... So I was probably one, one and a half or something. I have, I'm actually very much remember my, my childhood. And um, the backyard of my parents' yellow Victorian house with a rat porch, my best friend was named Peanut, and we were playing, and um, I was licking rocks and like in the tall grass because the, the lawn hadn't been mowed. So for me, that was like, and I remember being like, rocks taste good. <laughs> it was a funny thing. <laughs> 
And by the way, I was always like, um, my mom always dressed me to the nine. So even as like a young child, I had like my hair curled and like dresses and things. And I would come half like um, she nicknamed me half wild, half child. So I would come back completely destroyed. But I had a really good time. And I just love that memory because it's my mom letting me lick rocks and be in the sunshine with my best friend, Peanut. How do you see that memory connecting to who you are today? I'm exactly the same person. I am still half wild, half child. Like I'm, I run in, I live in New York city. I run in heels. Like I like to play, um, being in your senses. And also actually my mom still says, uh, today's her birthday, which is sweet. Happy, happy birthday, mom. Um, that, uh, she would always be there. And that always gave me a sense of safety. And I feel like whether as a coach or as a friend, just that sense of someone being there, for you, you know, and but letting you kind of be in the sun and have your own adventures is completely what I love about life. Mm, love it. And if you choose to lick rocks, then it's your choice as well, too. Yeah? It's your choice. <laughs> it's totally you can do it, and, and you know, it's amazing. And you know, maybe yeah. you'll make a new memory. There we go. If we fast forward to when you were 12 years old, what was your favorite song? 12. Oh my gosh. Um, I went to a Def Leppard concert. So it was probably pour some sugar on me. (laughs) I'm hot, sticky, sweet. Like it was, I went through like a little bit of a hairband phase because my older cousin was into it. So yeah, that was, or um, extremes more than words. I think probably extremes more than words. Love it. Love it. All right. Well, we've arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no. We're going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready, Tara? Mm -hmm. Tara, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Yes. Are you married? No. Do you have children? No. Do you believe in God? Yes. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? Nope. How about three hours a week? Yes. What about screen time, the phone under the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Less than eight. If you Definitely. had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents who you are, Tara Padua, what would you say that is? My own what? Sorry, I missed that first part. <laughs> My own bubble. Yeah, yeah sorry. I was, no, so, I was so good. Yeah, cool. Your own unique real statement. A statement real that represents st- who you are. Oh, this is easy. Um, it's from Marianne Williamson. It's only love is real. Hmm. Love it, Tara. This was a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Just thank you. Thank you for doing what you're doing. And um, yeah, just bringing lots of little voices. And I love your questions. Oh, Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. You did amazingly well. Tara, thank you for being on what is inspired by 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. This segment has been brought to you by Amazel Enterprise.